Hello, welcome, guten tag. Uh, this is Hans Van Wer Woodworking at its finest here. Uh, tonight we're just gonna take some video of me working in the shop uh, and see what's happening. Right now I'm making, I had a, well it's a shelf, I guess. Uh, a guy gave it to me as I was buying a bunch of other, uh, some of this stuff here, this is soft maple. Uh, he had just laying around, so he asked if I wanted it, and I said, sure. And uh, that's the story of how I came across this. So then I've been meaning to get myself a clamp rack of some sorts. So that's what this is. I got spaces on the ends here for my uh, bar clamps, messy style bar clamps. Uh, got my sash clamps. Uh, I got my big Jorgensen F clamps or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then a collection of pipe clamps, a couple spots for hold fast, and um, a big three quarter inch pipe clamp. So, oh, let's see here. Let's get to work. Alright, so, a little about myself here. I do primarily hand tool woodworking. Uh, I do have a table saw and a band saw I use for long rip cuts and, uh, and that kind of stuff. However, uh, primarily I work here at my bench and uh, using hand tools. One of these days I'll have to show you guys a collection of them. So, what I'm doing right now, and I think I actually got this in backwards, I do. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm putting the, and this is going to be kind of a crude one, so I have 36 and 48 inch uh, pipes for my pipe clamp. So the 48 inchers are going to sit on top, the 36ers are going to be what's actually in the, in the rack, because those are the ones that I'm usually using. Uh, 48s. Uh, ever since I got the pipes, I use them quite a bit, but uh, these just don't have near that much to use. So I have that white stuff all the time. Uh, which, as I say, that I primarily make furniture. Uh, this board here is. Uh, it's eventually going to be the top to a to a little TV TV shelf thing that I'm making for my parents for Christmas. Uh, it's always fun to be thinking about Christmas in the first part of September. I tell you what, all right. Um, so for this, yeah, I just uh, used my, my tenon saw to, well, use tenon saw on these because it's with the grain. Um, and then for this, I actually got a cheap crosscut saw. I think it was like 10 bucks from Hyper Kitten. And it's, I mean, any, anybody who knows anything about old saws knows that this um, is not worth a whole lot of money. It's, oh shit, I don't even know, probably 70s, 80s, 90s. It's fairly new actually. But the teeth are sharp as hell. So I did all my cross cuts with that. It breezed right through the popular. Which, that is one of the things I like about popular is it cuts about as easy as pine uh, but you don't get near as much splintering and planing works a little bit better chiseling works a little bit better um, it is a soft wood that works about like a hardwood
a lot of guys, you know, they'll do the plywood where you stack it up and you have the cuts in between there. This is a little more crude. Uh, I am in a shop that no one will ever see outside of you guys on YouTube. And so crude things, something like this, I just, just want to get it done. Just want to get her done. Um, so a little bit of crudeness, I don't mind. I actually, I think in woodworking nowadays, there's there's a good degree of gatekeeping going on um, with a lot of the magazines, especially, and especially now with social media. I mean, there's guys out there making amazing things, great things. Um, you know, you go back in time. You know, the, the pieces that, or the, I guess the, the, the style of craftsmanship that they're emulating. Um, we're taking those guys, you know, four months to make. And these guys are cranking them out in a weekend. Or maybe not a weekend, but in a week. Uh, gorgeous pieces. But for me, I am generally much more about strength and durability and lasting. Um, if I can help it, I don't like to use glue. Uh, I think a lot of people use it as a crutch. And sure, the, you know, the glue joint is stronger than the surrounding wood. So, yeah, I, um, my goal is eventually none of the, or I guess all of the pieces I make will use zero glue and instead use the, 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 the wood to lock, lock itself together. And the reason for that, and, and I know there's a lot of people out there screaming that Blue joint is stronger than the surrounding wood. Yep. You know, that is very, very true. However, that glue joint will also fail long, long, long before the wood does. And that is because you are taking Two pieces of wood and joining them with, with effectively a piece of plastic. And that wood is not going to want to stay joined to that plastic forever. However, wood and wood together, they can slide, they can move. Uh, wood on wood is actually a fantastic surface for sliding. Um, ask anyone. Well, okay, if you've used a metal body hand plane before and you've put wax or oil or something on the sole to lubricate it, after you lubricate it, that's about how smooth a wood body plane is just all the time. Anyway, um, just, just much more durability and also speed. I eventually would love to make a living at this. And so being able to do it quickly using hand tools without having to price myself into the ultra snobby crowd is, uh, is that's my final goal. That'll do for tonight. Um, plus, I just think wood is such a such an amazing story to tell. Oh. Here is the I'll get bolted onto the wall. They're thirty two inches apart, so it'll go right into my studs.
That took about an hour and a half with uh, probably about 45 minutes of that. Uh, 45 minutes of that of, with me just standing there saying, all right, what do I want to do? How do I want to do this? So, as like I said, this is, okay, we got white oak legs. This is gonna be the top. Well, maybe not this piece, but a similar piece to this. I still have to clean it up and all that. Um, so this is going to be, the legs are gonna, uh, I'm gonna cut these down, basically mortise and tenon, flip them to the top. I'm gonna do a wedge tenon, perhaps. Um, yeah, I think that's what I do. So what I had to do, figure out how far down it's going to stick, so that way I can figure out my mortises for everything else. Right. Right, 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 right. So let's set that there. Um, so, as I keep making these videos, you will quickly learn that I don't really know what I'm doing. A lot, of this, a lot of this is me figuring it out. I've been doing hand tools now. This is my, sort of my fourth year. Uh, this project here is actually my 30th one. Um, I've done a number of projects in softwood, 100% hand tools. Long, long line rips and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's where I've kind of gotten to the point. And actually this, I'm pretty sure this uh, white oak must have got my old distant and ripped her down. Uh, anyway, back to the task at hand. Um, yeah, so that's, that's why it's, Pure hand tools is great, especially if you um, if you're into history. I, I enjoy history, um, but it, it, at some point, when you have three kids and a house, and oh, oh I used uh, no, I mowed this up when I had my radio alarm cell. That's what it was. There's a mark here from the uh, the the blade. Anyway, um, at some point you just, uh, you have to get, get as much done as you can in as little time as possible, and uh, especially for, at life, I found once you get over, once you get over about 12 inches, whether that's in a straight line rip or cross cutting, that's when power tools really start becoming faster. Um, underneath that, by the time you get done setting the tool up, getting it out, especially especially if you're a hobbyist at working at home. Um, if, if you're under 12 inches total cut, you're better off using hand tools. It once you get adept at them, and, and that's part of it, you know, there's, there is a, uh, a non-insignificant learning curve to hand tools, but at the same time, it, it, it's, it's no different than it is with power tools. Um, 
And there sure as hell are a lot more videos out there. Power tools. And power tools, it's fairly simple. Once you once you get it set up, you're gonna see pretty pretty instant results without without a lot of work. And that certainly is some hand tools are a lot of work. All right, so we need to make a mortise here to accept the tenon. So I got. So I've got the, uh, this is a hard maple, or no, it's some sort of maple uh, stretchers going into the, the white oak legs. So I got the, the tenons already mostly cut. They're a little fat, so I'll have to, to trim those down a bit. But uh, So those go in there. I got it set back with a quarter inch from the edge, maybe an eighth of an inch, and a quarter inch. Um, then we got to do a half inch mortise here. So, uh, forgive me, it's going to get loud. Um, ooh. Don't let anyone fool you saying that you need expensive tools to get started. This, uh, this is a set, set of three chisels, half inch, three quarter, and one inch. Home Depot, 20 bucks for the set. Uh, these have been fantastic chisels. Um, they will sharpen up and take a get a phenomenally sharp edge on them. Uh, and it lasts pretty well. This one I recently dropped on the cement floor here, so its edge is not so hot. So I got my, got my chisel, and we're just chisel here. Uh, and this is another thing, Home Depot Special, the Empire brand. Uh, And you'll notice a theme with me. When it comes to precision, you know, there's people who are like, oh, you need to be within a sixteenth over over some distance. Um, yeah, no. I manage to I guess it needs to be about that an inch. Yeah. Um I manage to make things square. This is one thing I don't mess around with a whole lot. Um, I get things, I get things square. And I think that's a very important distinction. In that uh, you don't want to be overly sloppy. Some tear out, um, some joints not being perfectly tight. That's fine. You want things to be square. If only because then it, it looks good. Pencil. That's what I'm looking for. I'm just talking while I work here. Um, but for a little six inch square like this, if this thing is off, I haven't even checked it yet. Um, if it's off by a sixteenth of an inch way out here over the entire six inches, I can live with that because we're usually talking an inch, three quarters of an inch that I'll be going at most with it. And so I figured it can't get too far out of whack in that span. And honestly, all my cuts and everything like that are probably gonna be off by more anyway. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. All right, so now when you when you do a mortise, you want to go in the direction of your bevel. So let's say we're going to do, you know, mortise here. So start at this end. Now just kind of cock it back a little bit and light tap. Just kind of establish that line. And then I come in straight up and down and whack it. All right? Break out the piece and keep traveling on down until you get almost to the other edge and then flip it around. And then again, 
when you start on the other edge, light tap to establish a line, and then you whack, and then you go back the other way. You reverse and go back that way. Reverse, go back that way. Because, and, 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 and so the reason why you do those things, okay, so first off, you're establishing your shoulder line over here on either end. So you want those to be as close to the line as you can get them. And then after that, all you're caring about is powering through the wood. Now, the reason why you, you go that way is your chisel, it will naturally push away from the bevel. So when you go down, it'll push away and it'll break out a lot of that. So then you break it out and you keep moving across. Now, as you go towards the other end, you're gradually going to be getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So then when you flip it, so if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to be, you know, if you want a one inch mortise here, one inch deep mortise, um, you're going to be way over here and you're going to be down to your inch, but over here you might only be a half inch. Then you got to come back and you got to correct it. Whereas if you go back and forth, you know, start on one end, and then you know, kind of like how I eat sweet corn, typewriter style. On one end to the other and back. Well, I guess maybe not typewriter style, but anyway. So that way, it should be keeping. So when you're starting off on this end, because you're having to break through fibers on both sides, so you're not going to go as deep. But then when you get over here, you're going deeper, so it should kind of even itself out after a while. Seems to work halfway well. By the time I get to the bottom of my mortise, it's usually kind of ugly down there, so. So boom, I establish my, my line, come over here, and I whack. And whack. And Oh, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Whack. And we whack. And now we are in the process of making mortise. All right, so we got the first kind of first pass pretty much done. I am my next whack will be right on the right on my next line here. So then I'm gonna flip it around, and I'm gonna do my little tap. So boom, I've established that line. Well, I take that back. Uh, Good, good, good. I did not get very good breakout on that first pass. So, let's help it out a little bit. And for this, I always, 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 always use a straight screwdriver. Because... No lips director. I don't want to ruin my chisel edge doing something that I don't need a chisel edge for. And that is cleaning out my mortise, breaking, breaking wood fibers that have been broken. Okay, let's give it a little more whack. Now, now I'm up against my, my shoulder line here, I'm leaning back, because like I said, it's, it's going to want to push away from my bevel. So, there we go. I got a little bit of a... I had a little bit of a, of, a, of a ramp going this way, so I just had to clean that up. All right. Now, one thing when you are making these mortises, you're going to be tempted to try and hog off as much as you can in each, in each swipe. And... My preference is to take a little bit smaller chunks at a time, so I get a little bit deeper, because that motivates me as I'm going through this monotonous task of making mortises, especially on this one when I have three, six, nine, twelve, I have sixteen mortises to make. This is one that I think. 
I don't have any science behind it because I don't have a mortise machine. Uh, but a, a halibut mortiser would be much faster when you're dealing with 16 mortises. That, of that, I am fairly confident. If only because one nice thing about power tools is kind of once you have them set up and you're running stuff through, you're, you're gung-ho, you're ready to go, you're boom, let's do this. Let's do as much as we can in one shot here because we got it all set up and I'm not going to set it up again. Um, that takes time and that's and that's kind of where that crossover is now if you can set up your machine to a wood shop to always have everything all ready to go for you that changes the math mm. One other thing, why I like hand tools uh, over power tools is, and I've and and I've I, I did it on uh, the last project that I made actually. I did the tenons using a table saw. And for me, it just was not wasn't as enjoyable, right? Like at the end of it, when I made them, I'm just like, mm, yeah. You know, I had fence set up, I had stop block set up, I had depth set, uh, and okay. At some point for me, it was a matter of, you know, where is the skill in this versus am I just basically a machine operator and that's, and that's my take there's I mean there's there's quite quite the debate going on right now whether or not CNC is woodworking and I think that's about the dumbest debate you could ever have because woodworking by the very nature of the name is you guessed it working wood it doesn't matter what tools you use. Are you are you working wood now? Within there, it's like the square and rectangle thing, right? All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So, anyone who works wood is a woodworker by definition. It doesn't matter if you're a framer on a house or you're using CNC's or hand tools or if you're making perfection with Japanese joinery and all kinds of stuff or you're somebody following Anna White's plans and using pocket screws. Now, within the realm of woodworking, I feel you have so many different, so many different flavors. You know, it'd be like if you went to if you went to a beer garden. They said, "Well, this is a beer garden. We only serve Bud Light here. That's the only approved beer." Light. Well, I'm kind of shit out of luck, aren't I? For myself personally, I don't care to learn the minute details of CNC programming. Just like Make sure when you're uh, swinging your mallet, you hit the tool and not your hand. It's 
call that safety tip number one. And the next person out there may have zero interest in learning how to chop more just by hand. Get out there and make awesome shit. You get out there and you define your definition of woodwork. Across the bottom. Let's see here. Let's go. Let's go into that corner. Someday. I think it's called a fox tenon. For your blind tenon. Four sides be square, these two end ones are undercut, so the, the hole is bigger at the bottom than it is at the top here. Someday I'm gonna learn how to do that. So that way, do it like this. I can. Again, breaking rule number one. Hit my hand. My poor left hand, it took so much abuse. It, uh, when I'm 90 years old, it's gonna be well callous, that's for sure. I'm sure there's lots of people cringing at that. All six of you watching. We'll see, we'll see where it gets. Alright. I decided to do this on a whim. There are a lot of things out there about hand tool woodworking. I see people say that I'm like, you know, that is not my experience. So I was like, you know what, why don't I share my experience with people? So that is the whole point of this. Right? Sharing my experience. All right, we are. We are an inch depth. That's a shallow spot. Inch to inch underneath. We'll take that. Now there's a lot of videos, and uh, the reason why I bring it up is it just it caused me so much anxiety. See, look at that. Ah, this mortise looks pretty good. All right, now we have to find our tannin. And our tannin is this one here. Yeah. Here, I got one done. I can't do it. I got a gap there. That's the inside, inside bottom rail, so I don't really care. And this is pretty rough. 
Again, I don't care. There's gonna be there's gonna be a shelf above this, um, so it's not gonna be safe. Anyway, so there's there's just a lot of things that the hand tool woodworking caused me great anxiety when I got started. And probably slowed my learning process down. Oh, you guys are gonna love. The bottom side of this, look at that. And uh, that's gonna stay that way. It, uh, again, it's not it's not necessarily visible. It's gonna be, it's as you can see, front bottom, and then the arrow pointing to where the front is. Um, tell the story of how this thing was made. Like the like the, the line there, that, that definitely stays. This all tells a story. That's that's what to me is so powerful about woodworking. Ooh, front bottom goes. Nope. This way. There we go. Let's mark those before I forget. A. So what it, uh, something like this, I don't have a, a convention down on boxes. I always have start front right corner to me, and then it's A, and then B, C, D. On these I don't. It's just going to be in the order that I do them. It's just going to be the order I do them, and the order I do them. That's the way they're going to be now. I should probably have plans. And I should probably stick with them. Okay. So, what we have here, the, uh, the mortise is significantly smaller than the tenon. And that leads to problems. That leads to problems. There we go. Hopefully that wasn't too rough of a ride for you. Clean up this tenon with this uh, Stanley 78. It is a rabbit plane. Yeah, 78. Uh, I believe you can buy these new. This is fairly new. Uh, I bought it off eBay actually. Uh, new in the box. So it's never been used before. I need to get. So this little rod I'm taking off here. Shouldn't be this hard to get once I'm here. A little schmutz in the. There must be some schmutz in the uh, in the thing. Not sure what the voice that was supposed to be. Just so smooth, I can't get a grip. There we go. Threads don't look damaged, so that's always a positive. All right. 
my best friend. Little cans of, small cans of uh, various vegetables turned into holders of things. All right. working working tenants well you can feel pretty pretty good about where high spots are where low spots are those kind of things and I think that's part of the attraction for me to hand tools is it's just it's you're so much more connected with the wood as hippie ish as that sounds um, you get to know every piece a little more because you're working them. You have to figure out which way the grains go. Which... Stanley 78 in your arsenal. Um, one, I like it because you can find old copies of it. There's lots of parts out there. And it stood the test of time, so, so you know that it's not... I mean, when it comes to rabbit planes, you can find examples hundreds of years old. Um, so you, just, you know it's not some sort of little niche thing. Uh, that you're gonna buy it and use it once, if that. Um, these, you know, it has a depth stop there, it has a fence on it, so you can do rabbits with it real easy. It also has a bull nose, the, the 78s has a bull nose um, bed on it as well. You can get closer into things. That's the that's the only thing I've seen in terms of bullnose as to as to why why to have it. Um, but no, and then especially with the Stanley, I mean they got a great great reputation, especially if you go back in time. Um, now they're what Stanley Black and Becker. All right, let's give that a whirl. We'll see how it goes. All right, so. Front bottom goes that way. You get B and B. That's where we at here. Oh, this side over here. This side. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. I can see on here, I don't know if you can. I can see it's, it's, we still got a little bit of a hump there. I'm gonna get over the hump, the humpity hump. Tomorrow's hump day, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 guess this what day it is? Uh, I've been in corporate America far too long. Schmutz in the corner here. Schmutz in the corner. Scarlet, you hear that? We got some schmutz in the corner. I gotta get it out.
Oh, I think I think we got this. I think we got this. I think we got this. Let's see here. All right, bear with me here. Bear with me. Let's see where we're at. Where are we at? Oh, that's a rocky one. Cheap. Cheap tripods. Not meant for lots of movements. There we go. Oh, beautiful. For spacious skies, amber waves of grain. Ouch. Uh, I believe that's too tight. I'm giving her all she got, Captain. We just gotta take more off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. Ooh. And you can see it on there. We got some shiny spots. Some shiny spots on there that shows where it's been. Yeah, this side entirely. Let's see how we are for square. With this newer 78, so I got a newer one and an older one. Uh, I think I think this one's probably from the 60s or so. Just well, I guess it's no older than the 60s, I should say. Um, well, one other thing I will say about these, uh, I think they have a really good steel. Uh, in here for a little bit and then it gets really soft. I notice they're not keeping their edge nearly as long as they have been. The reason why I bring it up there is I saw a couple bits of metal. As I was working. Basic Science 101. Alright, so let's see here. That is good. Alright, so now the test I'm doing. I'm gonna put this corner in and see how it does. That one's pretty good. Fairly snug. This corner of the tent, see it's just not having a good time. So, how I said before, that my mortise chisel wanted to kind of almost be pushed by the bevel. Well, it works the same way when you're pairing. Works the same way when you're pairing. That's why you can pair 
bevel down, bevel up, bevel sideways, bevel. No, you can't go. You're going sideways. There. A little loose. A little looser than I would like. That's a cleanup of the boards to do. find anywhere that looks like a high spot down in there. Alright. Did we do it? Did we? Let's see. Oh, it's gonna get loud. Off. Make sure. Oh. That's right. This is one of the tricks I discovered. So, okay, so I had uh, these were, I have six of these. Uh, and I had six kind of different lengths. But I cut them so that way the shoulder to shoulder distance was the same. that's coming back to bite me right now. We must go deeper. Loudness ensues. It's hard been working on the mortis all the live long day. I've been working on the mortis to pass the time away. I have no more verses, but we will get this mortis to work out okay today. What I'm doing right now. So as I go in there, it's really it's not you don't have to pound hard. I'm getting make sure that try to stay close to the edge of where I'm chopping. I mean if you can imagine what it looks like down in here. You know, imagine a, a loaf of bread or a tomato or anything that you slice up. You slice it up. You have those things. So you have you have all your slices here. Well, if you go if you go way back here, you have all of this. You got to break off because it's attached attached on the bottom side and on the sides over here. All this to break off. Where if you go here, it's little, 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 little. Um, I had someone explain that to me when I was at Dig a Trench, and they said if you take little cuts. It's easier on each cut. So you don't max out every time. And you can last longer. Now how that song is gonna be stuck in my head. All right. Hold on. 
times. There we go. There's the side I already had done. There's the side I just done did. Uh huh. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to my little experiment here tonight. What time is it even? I don't know. I need to bed. Uh, next time, I think we're going to try to go for two tenons, two mortises in the hole. Uh, hell, we might even try and get it all done.